let's talk about unit 10, tolerancing. Tolerancing is very important because it allows the concept of interchangeable parts. We couldn't have parts that interchange with each other without tolerances. What interchangeable parts means is that if you have two things made in two different places by two different companies, at the worst case conditions of their tolerance bands, they should work. So if company A makes this and company B makes this, as long as this is large enough to fit this, it will work. And that's captured with worst case tolerancing. So the designer of this says, hey, what's the condition where it won't fit? That's where my tolerances are going to end, right? So even if this is the largest it can be, and this is the smallest it can be, it should still fit. Kind of goes without saying, but I'm going to say it. Parts must be within their specified tolerances for this to work. So this just assumes that people make the parts correctly and inspect them correctly. This doesn't apply to parts that are out of tolerance. If they don't fit, that has nothing to do with this system. So a tolerance is the total amount by which a dimension may vary. This can apply to feature dimensions, including size and location. So something like a hole has to be measured for size and its location. So it's going to have a tolerance for both of those things. So think about a thread. You would check it with a thread gauge, and then you'd check where that actual hole is. The first kind of tolerance we're going to talk about is the single limit. These are easy to spot because they're going to say max or min. The geometry must clearly show what the other side of this tolerance is. So if I give a thread depth, as a minimum, you have to meet that, but the thread could go further. So if it's a through hole and it's okay for the thread to go the full length, no big deal. But if I put a maximum on the thread depth, right, you could just not do a thread, right? So think min, max, minimum thread. There has to be a thread, but it can be larger. But if I put maximum thread length, that just means it's the max. The minimum is going to be zero. That'd be an incorrect use of this. So one example, probably seen where this is very common, is for something like a fillet. In this case, it's got a maximum radius, but on the other end, it can be zero. So a part that had no radius at all would be totally acceptable. If I put minimum, right? So it's either got to be here, but it could go all the way out there. So it's a little bit more unclear. These are common in depths of holes and threads, fillets, rounds, and chamfers. But just remember, for something like this, if it's got a maximum, the minimum zero, right? If it's got a minimum, then the maximum is infinity. Our next dimension are our limit dimensions. So these are on a lot of older drawings, but they're still applicable today. Typically, you see a limit dimension for something that has been sized with for a fit. So think like a, a clearance fit or sliding fit or force fit. So a limit dimension will look like this for a hole or a cylinder. So we've got one diameter symbol. We've got the upper limit and the lower limit. So the hole can be as big as one inch or as small as 0.955 or 955 thou. The difference between the max and the min is the tolerance. So we could say, the tolerance is 5 thou for this feature. So the limit dimension is shown in a note. It'll be written minimum dash maximum. So this only applies to notes. You wouldn't see this in a dimension. Sometimes you'll see this in a, a general note at the top of a drawing. 
plus minus dimensioning is one of the most common things you're going to see on a drawing. It comes in several flavors, uh, unilateral, bilateral equal, and bilateral unequal. Our unilateral dimension is something you'll typically see on tightly tolerance parts or things that have fits. So they're going to look... So plus minus dimension dimensioning will come in these flavors. First, we have unilateral. So if you notice, we have our dimension. We have how much larger it can be. So it can be one inch plus 20 thou and how much smaller it can be. So one inch minus zero, one inch. This is equivalent. to writing diameter 1.02 over 1 as a limit dimension. They mean the same thing. The next one is our bilateral equal. You'll see these all the time. Some people call them uh, symmetric dimensions. So 1.0 plus or minus 20 thou. So if we wrote this with limit dimensions, it would look like that. So in this one, we have 20 thou of total tolerance. This one, we have 40 thou of total tolerance. You have to look pretty close at these to spot the difference. And our next one, our bilateral unequal. So we've got 1.0 plus 20 thou minus 30 thou. This one, written with limit dimensions, would look like this, 1.02.99, right? So there's just a lot of different ways to write the same thing. They all, if the total tolerance is the same, it basically means the same thing. So if you see this on a drawing, see this on a drawing, means the exact same thing. It shouldn't change the manufacturing or the inspection process. So if this part comes in at 0.99, it's still wrong, right? It's still incorrect. It doesn't matter how close it is to the zero or not. Anything outside of this range is wrong. Let's chat about a few other dimensions you'll, you'll hear about. The first is a nominal dimension. A nominal dimension is just a designation for a commercial product. It doesn't include tolerances and it might not even be the correct dimension. So an example of this is a two by four. You go buy a two by four from the lumber yard that's the nominal dimension, basically just what people call it. If you go measure it, it's really an inch and a half by three and a half in inches. And the tolerances for that, which there are tolerances, are in a handbook somewhere. Whoever makes them, buys them, trades them, knows what the tolerances are and how they can reject them if they need to. The nominal just lets you know what they call it. So you could go look up that handbook as well, find out exactly what it's supposed to be. It's similar with pipes. Pipes are indicated by nominal dimensions, which might barely have anything to do with the actual size of the pipe. The basic size is a size used as a starting point for making fit calculations. So a fit has to be calculated based on two objects that have to fit together, right? So there's, there's three basic kinds of fits. There's clearance fits, force fits, and then in-between fits. So they could be either one or the other. The basic size is just a starting point to calculate these. A basic dimension is a totally different thing, which we'll get into. A basic dimension is a dimension in a little box. This indicates that there's GD and T on the drawing, and it just shows the theoretical perfect location for things. You never inspect to basic dimensions. You would inspect to geometric tolerances, which we'll talk about later. It's just a good to know that the basic dimension is different from a basic size. A datum is a theoretically perfect point, line, or plane, which is basically where the dimensions come from. 
datums are located by physical things on the part called datum features. So a datum feature could be a hole, could be a plane, could be a, a width feature like a groove. All sorts of things could be datum features, but it has to be something physical to develop the theoretical datum. A datum feature symbol indicates where the datum feature is. So in this quick little drawing, this little guy right here is a datum feature symbol. It indicates that this surface over here is a datum feature. So when we go to figure out whatever this is, we're gonna put the part right here and measure over here to figure it out. Instead of, say, we put the part right here and then we measure from here to here, right? It's a whole system of doing it and we'll go into it in later units. The MMC is the maximum material condition. It's the condition where the material has its largest size possible. Another way to think of it is when is the feature is the heaviest. The maximum material condition for a shaft is the largest diameter for that shaft. Think the heaviest shaft. The maximum material condition for a hole is the smallest hole, right? Think it has the most material it can. Least material condition is just the opposite. It's when the thing is the lightest. So that would be the smallest diameter of a shaft or the largest hole. MMC creates a boundary of perfect form. When a part departs from the MMC, the form is allowed to vary. And don't worry, we're gonna talk about this a lot, but this is something you'll have to remember. And one more thing, there's no requirement for perfect form at LMC. So let's talk about how we put this into action. Right here, I have a pin that needs to fit into this hole. You notice I have the hole in section, it would look. So a pin, the maximum material condition, is the largest diameter. So we could say that the MMC 1.02, the LMC is 0.98, okay? And that's all there is to it. There's no magic, right? If you put calipers on this pin and you get 1.03, that part is not correct. There's a boundary of perfect form at the largest diameter. As that part gets smaller, right? So we draw Say we've got our boundary of perfect form. Say this part is right in the middle, it's at 1.0. This is our boundary of perfect form at 1.02. It's gotta hit that. If the part comes in at 0.98, it can be a little banana shaped, right? Any, when the part departs from MMC, the form is allowed to vary equal to that departure, right? So if this, any diameter on here is 0.98, you can have 20 thou away from the perfect form boundary. So let's put this to work. I want this pin to fit in that hole. So how do we figure it out? We know this is the largest the pin can be, right? We can't violate that MMC. We want to do the same thing for the hole, right? The hole's MMC is the smallest diameter of the hole. So all we have to do is make sure the hole does not get smaller than this. So when I come over here, I want to make sure that the lower limit of that hole is at least equal to this. Can't be smaller than that. The upper limit of the hole can be whatever. Doesn't matter for our purposes right now, but any additional tolerance you get there will be clearance. So if the hole comes in small, 1.02, the pin comes in big, they'll still fit. 
if I wanted to make an interference fit, I would make it so that the hole would always be smaller than the largest the pin could be, right? So that's just the basics of how fits work. There's huge tables in Machinery's Handbook. We won't be able to go over it online this semester. We'll catch up to it in SOLIDWORKS next semester. You're welcome to go through the book and give it a shot. But this is the, the basics of how that works.